Hey there, fanboys and fangirls. This is your host, The Other Luke, and we're back again for another episode of the Furious Fancast. And with me, this new partner in crime, Sean. How you doing, Sean? Hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm doing good. So, as, as we talked last week about Civil War, now we're going to talk about our thoughts on the film. Um, yes. Sean has seen it twice already, but I've only been able to make it out and see it once, and I had to wait a minute to see that. I didn't get to go to the midnight premiere like I was hoping for, but I still saw it, and I enjoyed it. It's a great movie. Got a lot of a lot of cool things to talk about, some questions, uh, you know, and just some overall things that we just geeked out hard about. Oh, yeah. So, uh... uh planning on going back and seeing it hopefully in IMAX. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's where it's at. So, what are, what were your initial thoughts just general as as the movie as a whole? Um wow. Uh the Russo brothers, I thought did a fantastic job uh taking characters that have already been introduced to us via, you know, Iron Man, Captain America and and Ant-Man and whatnot. Um uh that's really, you know, I, I, tons of action, which I absolutely love. They're kind of dragged on at parts. Um, I, I think it should have been called uh, Bucky Barnes, Winter Soldier, or Civil War. Yeah. You know, there was, was, was a lot of lot of uh, Bucky Barnes in it, and, and I, I'm not complaining because, you know, we've been wondering what happened to him after, after Winter Soldier, so we finally kind of got a glimpse into what he's been up to, even before Winter Soldier, I guess, with, with you know, him in... Uh, I forget where it was, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, I did too. And the main thing I was pumped about was seeing Spider-Man. And we've already had two versions of Spider-Man already. And I enjoyed Garfield's uh, more, but from my, initially from this one, I mean, we didn't see as much as I thought we were going to see. But I did enjoy what we saw, though. Um, it was nice oh, yeah. to see a younger Peter and a younger Aunt May, because you know we've always seen old Aunt May and old Uncle Ben, and we know all right, Uncle Ben's about to get shot. Let's let's all get sad for a moment. But right. they they didn't do that. They were like, all right, you've got Aunt May, you've got Peter. They're happy. Things are going well. You know. Right. I, I like the direction they went with the, the younger Aunt May version and the younger Peter as well. Uh, it was a way to keep it standing out from. The other two, since it's just it's been so close since the Amazing Spider-Man two came out, that you, you kind of want to make it different, you know, in as many ways as you can, so that way it's not always compared to that previous one, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and I, I mean, I absolutely loved Tobey Maguire. I, I he's right now he's he's still my favorite, and you know, I probably get a lot of a lot of bash for saying that, but you know, that's. I liked his portrayal of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Hey, just like the prequels, people are fan of one or the other or both. Yeah, right. Um, um, so I guess we'll we'll go into some of the key key aspects of the movie. So I guess from right now, I guess we should have said initially, spoiler alert. But I guess yes. if you're listening to this, you already know <laughs> spoilers are going to be contained. And if you don't, then well. That's on you. You've been warned. Yes. All right. Um, so you want to give this a kickoff? Yeah. Um, if you listened to our last show, we talked about, about the comics versus the actual movie. And turns out, my predictions, I was completely off the charts. You know, I, I was. they did not go with the books at all. I, I'm not complaining because I actually liked how they did it in this one. They tied the, what events that happened in the Avengers movie and then the Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. they worked they worked those events into hey, you guys can't do your own thing on your own now. We, the government is going to be in charge of you. Yeah, um, and and I like how they did that. I'm okay with them not with going that way instead of the book version. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. There was it was a way to make it the same, but yet. In a way different because you know you still got 
your uh, we were definitely off with the whole Spidey and Captain team mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. but we did have that one little that one little moment where uh, Spidey catches um, that little walk the airplane walkway, mm-hmm. and uh, you know him and Cap kind of have that moment. Right, where, where are you from, kid? Yeah, Queens, and he's like, I'm from Brooklyn. I thought that was a nice nod too to you know their location as the part where they actually are in the real world. Yeah, um, I like that. Uh, and another thing is, a lot of people have been saying that this this movie it, it doesn't stand on its own. Like you, if you've never seen any of the other movies, if you go in and you see this movie, yeah, you might enjoy it, but you're gonna be lost. Yeah, you definitely need to have at least seen the the both the Avenger movies, I think. At least. Yeah. Um but I mean they they pulled a lot from all the different movies to kind of to bring it all together. It was like you said, uh the events from the first Avengers and the second Avengers and kind of wrapping that all up together uh to get this initiative. Right, they tied it in real good, I thought. Uh and know we we also talked about General Ross and whether his part was going to be heavy or not, and and it really wasn't that heavy in the movie, which I, um, it's what it is. But I yeah. kind of I'm okay with how he he was, you know, the the mind behind the actual accords and you know all that. Now I will say this: the, the Russo brothers, you know, you go into this movie thinking Iron Man or or Captain America. You know, mm-hmm. what side are you going to be on? And I was already team cap, but I was, you know, I kind of pushed those feelings aside to go, you know, see who I would weigh in with the actual movie. Yeah. And man, oh man, I, Tony Stark, I, I wanted to punch him yeah. in, his, in his face the whole <laughs> movie. And, and I, I just didn't like, you know, me, the government, I, I like Cap says the, I don't remember the exact quote, but he said the safest hands are always our own or something along that line. Yeah. Totally, I totally agree with that because, you know, government, you know, they want you to go here and do this, but you're really needed over there. And I felt and, like they didn't focus on um, much of the relief fund that Tony Stark mentioned that he had set up, you know, because he mm-hmm. had that and he and – he, and he, yes, they, they have all this destruction that they leave. Um, but they do make an effort to fix it. I mean, yes, it, it, it sucks that, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, devastate from these events, mm-hmm. but as, as you've seen, have these, these evils, they're there, you know? Right. And, and that's it, another thing is, oh, sorry, go ahead. It's just like, okay, sure. it's just like, you know, gun laws, you know, you've, you've got your criminals and they're not going to abide by the laws. They're going to do what they want to do, just like your villains, and they're going to do what they need to do. And if you put these restraints on the people that are trying to help you and defeat the villains, and that's just kind of creating an enemy that you that doesn't even need to be your, your enemy in the first place, you know? Right, right. Um, and they also they, – they played on Tony Stark. Um, they played on his conscience, if you will, if you think he's got one. But uh, how <laughs> – how that mother talked to him after he was did that presentation at MIT and and you know hey my son was there helping people and you dropped half the country on top of him or whatever um and you know his his guilt is what leads him into believing what he believes in and hey government needs to have their hand in what we do right and and, and, and you got to uh, go ahead and it was like with um Within uh, Age of Ultron, um, that all those events, you know, go back to him and Bruce in the lab, uh, you know, what they were working on. And since Bruce isn't around in this one, he's kind of left alone with, you know, all that, like you said, all this guilt from that whole event. Because a lot of that event, you know, weighs on him, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and I guess the, I'm trying to think of with Cap and how he went. I mean, it, that, that opening scene with with Crossbones, um, which I'm a little disappointed that he didn't. Yeah, have a let's get, part. Yeah, let's get into that real quick. What happened with Crossbones? It's like, hey, what's up, Crossbones? All right, see you later, Crossbones. Exactly. They were trying to steal that. 
I, I'm assuming that biochemical weapon and and then he goes and, and blows himself up but uh, Scarlet Witch and having her having you know her guilt like she caused the death of those people in that building mm -hmm. um, even though she did it unintentionally you know she still felt the the uh, the, the guilt. grief and the, the guilt there we go that you know she she cost those people their lives and and cap i like how he stood up for her at that meeting and mm -hmm. saying you know hey this is still fresh it needs to you know sit a little bit longer but i i liked you know i and robert downey jr i absolutely love him as tony stark no one else could do it and i'm gonna be upset when he's done yeah but um i hated him and i i i never hated <laughs> Right, a superhero like that, and, and and I know you know it's it's civil war and things are going to be what's different from here on out. But I just I hated him, I hated him. Yeah, and um, I. Uh, you're I was going to say we can go ahead and um, kind of get into a breakdown of some of the newer characters that we that we were introduced into. Right. Yeah. Um, Black Panther. Uh Chadwick Boss Bosman, fantastic. Um, I'm I'm super excited for the standalone Black Panther film. We're gonna. Oh, me too. Oh, me too. Yeah. Uh, uh, and his backstory, I don't like it early. I don't really know much about his backstory or his origin, mm -hmm. but I I like how they you know the bomb exploded, killing his father at the UN meeting, and mm -hmm. him kind of picking up the mantle from there. Yeah. Um, I like how they they kind of. Even though it wasn't a Black Panther movie, they said here we're going to give you kind of a a little sneak peek, story. right? Yeah, um, and I, I thought that was fantastic. You know, the, the the fight scenes with him and and Buck when they first meet each other on top of that roof. Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah, probably probably my my second favorite fight fight scene was with them two, um, chasing through the city. I forget they Legos. I don't I don't remember where they were, but I, I was absolutely pleased with black panther's inter introduction into the mcu yeah and his, and his suit is just yes. i mean bulletproof yeah full-on vibranium yeah yep he kind of tore in the cap shield there too a little bit and mm -hmm. got claw marks that was that was awesome really liked him um and now spider-man we finally finally get to see him in the mcu where he should have been from the go. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, uh, the the first meeting between Stark and 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 Peter and Aunt May I thought was was great. Hey, you've been getting those emails about that grant, you blah 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 and and that look that he gives yeah. Peter and you know like you know that thing we were talking about and he's kinda nodding his head to the side like, you know, fantastic. I, I love that. And they brought up a young Aunt May and mm -hmm. you know, if you're in the older women i mean she was pretty pretty good looking aunt may there yeah yeah and you know stark even made that comment <laughs> yeah that was um, funny yeah and and they kind of showed it, you got a very brief glimpse of of peter's suit before um tony stark i guess uh redesigns it he had like goggles yeah, and, and and then like a hoodie on. It kind of remind. I can't think of the, the the storyline of the the Spider Man that I'm thinking of, but it, it looked like a costume that was worn by Peter Parker. In it's not the main storyline or timeline. It was a different one. I can't remember, but it kind of was reminiscent of that. Mm -hmm. Um, his suit, um, his web shooters were outside of his wrist. They were like bracelets. One a big fan of that. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted those to be concealed like they are in the books. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, because now that leaves it open to where, all right, well, now we see where those are at. All right, we can destroy these now. Yeah, and, and he had the utility belt. It was definitely there. Mm -hmm. The the eyes, the animation on the eyes when they open and close, and and all that. That fight scene at the airport. Oh my god. Yeah, that was. Overall, that was just an intense fight. Oh yeah, yeah, um, and 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 then Peter, Peter with the 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 quips and and all the talk that he did between you know Black or uh, Falcon and, and Winter Soldier, you know, 
he keeps talking and, and Falcon's like, I don't know if you've ever been in a fight before, but there's not this much talking. Of, there's not this much talking, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is funny because that's just from from the show and the uh, the Spider Man games back on the PS one. You always had those like witty little one liners that he was always throwing around. Right. Yeah. And, and and like I said, I guess it has to do with being a young, you know, Peter Parker, and I think it's going to be great. I can't, like I said, I can't wait for Homecoming. Um, I can't. I, I'm excited for for Spider Man's future. Yeah, that's going to be pretty. Uh, pretty interesting to see see where they take it. Yeah, I'm excited. Um. More with that airport fight. Like we predicted it, or I predicted it. We got to see Giant Man. Yeah, uh, that was super awesome. And you know, Paul Rudd, I that dude is hilarious. I I, I, I like pretty much I, everything he's in. I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it was. It happened too fast, and then it was just gone. You know. Yeah. Because we didn't see anything leading up to knowing that we were going to get Giant Man. It just kind of happened, and you get this one little line, and he's like, oh, I've been working on this. Boom, I'm giant. Right, yeah. You know? I did this did this once in a lab, and I passed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would have been dope to have, like, a uh, like just a little, like, post credit scene or something, you know, where you, where you see him testing it out, and you, and you just get to see, like, a, just a little, short little glimpse of it. You know, that would set yeah. up perfectly for it. And yeah, then, that would have been nice. And speaking of, while we're on Ant Man, with his with his tech, like in the, the Ant Man movie, we see that there's people after this this tech, this formula. Mm-hmm. His gear, along with a couple other people's gear, is locked up in a government that we've already known has been corrupt. Right. Yeah, it gets locked up when they get captured. Yeah. How do we not know that? You know, unknowing to us, something behind the scenes went down, and someone snagged, uh, you know, one of Ant Man's little disc, mm-hmm. or you know, right. And again, like putting them in like a maximum security prison, you took away their weapons. What else are they going to do? You know, I mean, yeah, they're 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 pretty good fighters, but I mean, it's not like you know, like you know, like the Hulk, for example, or or uh, or Vision. You know, like pretty much a lot of when you take away the their tech or their suit or whatever, you know, that's they're pretty just much, people. They're just people. Yeah, they, they're they're good. They're hand to hand combat people, but that's about it. Uh, well, you got Scarlet Witch. She got captured, and you know, she's kind of more. Well, she yes, yeah, well, her her yeah. her body is a weapon. Yeah, that's why they they had her in a straight jacket. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, let's War Machine. Let's talk about War Machine. Now, um, they didn't have any deaths. Spoiler again. No, yeah. one, no one died. Um, Seriously which injured. I'm, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm torn on the that part. You know, I kind of wish someone would have got right. that. And you know, I, I'm glad no one did. But yeah, they they sh- he got shot out of the of the sky, and and you know, he definitely his back broke. I think is what they said, and. You know, it's yeah. He was just in like that that suit. It was just dead weight, and he just plummeted. Yeah, but I mean, I think the suit ended up, you know, saving his life in the end. You know, just a few broken bones, but mm-hmm. uh, it still kind of sucks. Yeah, because when you when you just you know the initial thought and from what we've seen when you when you hear Civil War, you just you know there's going to be a lot of conflict. And there's probably going to be some bloodshed. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, as we see, I mean, yeah, I mean, War Machine, he got seriously injured. But, uh, no, I mean, cross, die. yeah. Crossbones died, but, I mean, we didn't have any time to connect with that guy. Right. Well, I mean, if you connected with him in Winter Soldier, because uh, he was in that. But as as crossbones, you know, I'm right. still I'm kind of kind of disappointed that they just you know, because that was hey like the, here's crossbone and then that's it. Yeah, because that was the first photo I think that was uh, released whenever they were filming, wasn't it? Was I, I believe I believe you're right. Yeah, Cap and him fighting. Yeah, and that's you know we we totally forgot about Red Wing. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was cool. Fal- that was that was really cool to see that. Uh, 
I mean, it wasn't an actual bird. It was a drone. But that, that's cool, though, to you know, see how they, they – A modern, modern, modern take on, on that, and, and I thought it was that, that, that was perfect, you know. Yeah, because you know when you have Tony Stark on your team, he, he's, he's going to do whatever he can to make you some dope toys, you know? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, back to that fight scene also when, when Black Widow, she kind of flip-flops. You know, she's on Iron Man's team, and then she realized – I don't – I forget the moment where she says, oh. Oh, it was when – um, yeah, whenever she, uh, she said that she would uh, take him to him. She wouldn't help him capture him, I think it was, or something, something along those lines. Yeah, she ended up stalling Black Panther so Cap and, and Bucky could leave. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm blanking on the comics, but I, I think she did that in the books. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't remember 100%, but, you know. And her fight, her little, little conversation with Hawkeye, you know. We're still friends. You know, it depends on how hard you hit me. Right, that was, I thought yeah. that was that was great, but um, and yeah, with and, and speaking of Hawkeye, like, didn't he have this huge, like, midlife crisis in Age of Ultron that he wasn't going back out in the field? I don't, I don't know if it was a, a midlife crisis, but he did, I, you know, air quotes retire. Yeah, and, and uh, Cap, I guess, got a hold of him and was like, "Hey, we need you here. I need you to go rescue Scarlet Witch from uh, this." makeshift house slash prison where she's held up with vision, which their scene where she, she escapes that, that, that little prison or house and she legit, uh, she sends vision, I, you know, crushing through the earth. And, and, you know, I thought their relationship was going to be played a little bit more, you know, on, on the love side. I thought we were going to see a little bit more of that, which we really didn't, you know, it's whatever, but, um, Man, she she did some work to Vision. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah. Um. So we did get to see the raft. Uh, yeah. The the super prison was right about that. Um, yes, yeah, so that was something that you had a lot more knowledge about. Um, cause you had mentioned this last time. Uh, so to me, it was I didn't really know much about it going into it. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty. It was pretty cool to see see how they how they put that together. Yeah, yeah, and and unfortunately, you know, Ant Man, Hawkeye, Falcon, and Scarlet Witch, they all get caught, and and that's where they end up, and that's where we see Tony Stark walking around uh, in the trailer. We saw him walking around their cells. Um, it's I, I what I remember from that besides the the conversation with uh, Hawkeye or Falcon. Is is again Paul Rudd as, as Scott Lang? He says, "Yeah, Pim always did say you can't trust a Stark." And and Tony goes, "Who are you?" <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That that was funny. That, yeah, it's and and she's like, "Oh, come on, man." Um, I, I like that. And, and Tony, for a second, you know, he he flipped sides and or if a truce and was like. You tell me where he is, I'll go find him. I won't talk with General Ross, and I'll just go find him myself and deal with it. Um, I, I, you know, I guess it kind of showed him coming back to his normal side, and he, he ends up not. But uh, when he's in the helicopter leaving the raft, he pushes, he puts his finger on that button, and the suit, it, it, it climbs onto him from this finger. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, and his his little uh. Um, little gauntlet he had that came out of his watch. Yeah, his repulsor. Yeah, mm -hmm. that saved his life because you know Bucky would shot him in the face. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I was gonna say something that I totally forgot. Yeah, what about uh, going into how they they tied in uh, Bucky with uh, Stark's dad and all that. Yes, when the revelation that was the I guess big reveal. I saw that coming. I'm not gonna lie. I, I knew, I knew that's pro that was leading yeah. to that moment. And and you know I, I felt bad for Buck because that he wasn't in his right mind. He was being controlled. And I mean, yeah, mind control is a bitch. Yeah, and Tony, I don't think he felt as bad as he did for his father, as he did for his mother. Because you hear him say. Uh, he killed my mom, 
and and that kind of that pushed him over the edge, and that led to that fight scene between uh, Cap and, and Iron Man and, and Buck in the uh, Russian uh, military facility, uh, which they did. They referenced uh, the com- the the cover for the first issue of Civil War with uh, Cap holding his shield up and Iron Man doing his blast on mm-hmm. one side. That that was direct reference to the cover art for I think the first issue yeah yeah I, I, I'd recognize that yeah um boy Iron Man he he lays in a Tony there for a little bit and then uh when he blasts Winter Soldier's arm he blasts his arm completely off yeah which I kinda I didn't I thought that was like I didn't see that coming um but but then you kinda like in the uh, the other ones uh there's always that nod uh to Star Wars, to where someone loses, loses a limb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I guess, yeah. I guess they felt that was, that was the way they wanted to go this time. Yeah, someone losing an arm, right? Someone but I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a a cool way. To, I mean, when you think about it, because he's no longer that person, you know. Yeah. So he's now gonna have some new arm, you know, some new kind of tech or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's going to represent this, this new version of him. So since we didn't really get literal deaths of any characters, we got deaths of certain personas of characters. Right. And we got a rebirth. uh, Yeah. Hopefully we'll, we'll see more of uh, winter soldier in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we'll see. See a good bit, yeah. Uh, and of course, we can't we can't leave out Stan Lee and his you know cameos <laughs> that he's always in. And this one was was a good one. It's probably uh, out of my third favorite cameo that he's been in. Um, I got a package here for Tony Stank. <laughs> yeah, t- Tony yeah. Stank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was great. That was great. Uh, and then you know uh, after that we get the the scene where. Uh, where uh, uh, Bucky Wakanda. and Cap, yeah, Bucky and Cap, we get our first glimpse of Waka- glimpse of uh, Wakanda, which is I thought was awesome. Um, that Black Panther statue, uh, you know, and they're and they're a, they're a highly advanced na- uh, country, so they were in a nice laboratory, if you will, in the mm-hmm. middle of the jungle, um, which I thought you know that, that's perfect. I, I'm super pumped for for that movie again, the Black Panther. Yeah, it was cool to see how they, even though they're a rich society, they're still grounded, you know, in in their roots of of their heritage. Yeah, because it's that's the because we're gonna see a lot with uh, like uh, their guards, the Wakanda guards. Um, I mean, their whole job. I mean, they're like the Imperial guards. Their job is to protect the emperor. Like their mm-hmm. job was to protect the king, they failed at that job. Imagine, you know, all this regret and guilt that they feel now. Mm-hmm. And so now you've got, you know, is now how long, you know, before this, you know, had um, Black Panther been, uh, what's his name? Just slipped me. His his father. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, like. Uh, like, are we going to go into seeing in, in his movie, or we're going to be seeing like kind of a passing of the torch when his father was the Black Panther to when his son became the Black Panther? Um, or is that even, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not too familiar with Black Panther's uh, story, so I don't really know how, how that whole, I guess, thing works out. Well, from my understanding, it's, it's passed on after death. So I think in, in when, when his father died in this one, it, he he it, it went to T'Challa, the who's the current Black Panther. He 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 picked up the mantle after his father had died. Um, so that's I think that's where where uh, we already saw how he became you know the Black Panther. His, his father died in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, so his so he was still so his dad was still out there. You know, I oh I, man, kicking yeah. kicking kick, kick ass. I, I think so. I mean, I like I said, I, like, we both. I don't know much about, you know, pre T'Challa. It was t- uh, the king Ch- t- Ch- 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 Chaka Chaka. I don't know, but I don't know much of his his backstory. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that I'm interested to see though. Um they 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 did they piqued my interest for Black Panther. Yeah. So I definitely oh, want to yeah. learn more about him. Oh yeah. Um and then after we got we got the after that was the the first end credit was uh, the glimpse of Wakanda and then uh, we saw uh Spider-Man yeah. will return. Yeah, he's just chilling on his bed uh messing with his his web shooters and and we got a nice little nod to the spider symbol, which is another reference to the actual comics, because Peter does, for a period of time, have a spider symbol that looked just like that. Yeah. Um, no, one thing that I didn't like is a couple times he didn't call Aunt May Aunt May. He just called her May, which I, I found that found that a little weird, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just me being choosy, I guess. Yeah. But, but- uh, that was... Go yeah. Ahead. yeah, that was uh, that's that's civil war there. Yeah, in a nutshell. <laughs> so overall, it was. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely wanting to see it again to kind of, you know, now that I have my first thoughts of it and I've you know seen it, I can now focus on okay, what did I miss over here in the corner? You know, that I didn't pay attention to the first time through. You know, right? Yeah, that's you know, that's how it was with Star Wars. You know. You go the your first viewing of it, and you're just you're just you're in awe. that moment. Yeah. You're in the moment, yeah, and you and you're just oh my gosh, I'm you know, ten years or so since the last one, and you know it's back. But that's the same way. I'm gonna have to go see it again, and and I guess pay more attention to background stuff and you know things I might have missed during the first show or viewing. Yeah, and and like we had discussed last week, what we're gonna start doing, uh, Civil War was kind of our our kickoff title for the show coming back. Um, but we're going to be doing for each major title that we, we want to cover uh, or that any of you guys request us to cover. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a pre-release show. And we're just kind of going to talk about uh, what we've seen throughout the trailers uh, and clips and things like that. Uh, get our thoughts on where we think the story's headed. Uh, you know, just kind of get a general idea of the movie in its direction. And then we're going to do another uh post-release show uh, we're going to do that you know we're going to do it about a week after it's released to kind of give everyone time to to watch it because we know not everyone can go see it you know uh at midnight let alone you know sometime that weekend mm-hmm. so we want to give everyone time to be able to view it and then once the movie comes out on blu-ray and dvd we're going to do uh, commentaries uh, on them as well and uh, one we've actually got coming up is uh, towards the end of the month. We're going to be doing a Force Awakens commentary, so that'll be that'll be our first one. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, woohoo, Star Wars! And I think also we're uh, we're going to be recording a couple different ones because we're actually going to be in the same location for a while. So we're going to use that opportunity to our advantage. And I think we might uh, go ahead and do a Deadpool one as well. Because uh, I finally saw Deadpool. I didn't have a chance to see it while I was in theaters. Unfortunately, I kept trying to see it. And then, you know, plans kept getting changed. And work kept getting in the way. And so I just ended up waiting until it came out on Blu-ray. And I, so I grabbed it and watched it. And upset at myself that I didn't take the extra time to try to go see it in theaters. Oh, yeah. That's but, when you got to see in theaters. Yeah. It, but it's, it, it's, it's good, though. I definitely enjoyed it. It was... A lot better than I uh, I thought, but we're not going to go into that now. Right, that's another show. Yeah. So, um, leave uh, your comments, uh, questions uh, down below, and uh, until next week, I'm the other Luke. I'm Sean, and uh, stay nerdy.